Hey guys, my name is John King here at redesign.co and sgileads.com, strategically partnered with Success Group International. I invite you to reach out to our team and schedule a free digital marketing consultation to talk about what you're currently doing to promote yourself out there in your market and what we might be able to do to help you better generate more phone calls, brand awareness, and revenue for your business, leveraging what more than 100 SGI members already leverage to generate higher quality leads for their businesses. If you feel like you're not getting the best out of your digital marketing and you're trying to figure out what the other successful SGI members are doing, give me a shout. We'd love to talk to you. Have a great rest of your day and we'll see you soon. Support for this podcast comes from Pulse M. Improving your online presence just got easier with Pulse M, the number one reputation management platform built for home services. Address your customers in real time with industry-leading field management software that makes it easy to ramp up your online presence and increase customer loyalty. We focus on how many reviews your business receives and how much that impacts your bottom line. For more information, text PMSGI to 70402 or visit try.pulseam.me slash partner slash SGI or try dot p u l s e m dot m e forward slash p a r t n e r forward slash s g i welcome to the successful contractor powered by success group international a show for residential contractors about residential contractors we chronicle business journeys share insights and celebrate successes in this wonderful industry i'm your host bob houchin Hello there, SGI family and other contractor friends. I'm so thankful you're here. As a reminder, all episodes of the Successful Contractor Show are available on YouTube as well as your podcast player of choice. Also, if you're a non-member interested in learning more about SGI and how we can help your business grow both on the top and bottom line while becoming part of the contracting industry's largest network of contractors, we're having Profit Day seminars in my hometown, St. Louis, Missouri, Lansing, Michigan, Atlanta, Georgia, Little Rock, Arkansas, Nashville, Tennessee, and Salt Lake City, Utah. Give us a call at 866-299-8505 to attend. SGI members in those markets, if you'd like to come and share with everyone your experiences with the group, give your coach a call. We'd greatly appreciate your help. Today shows another SGI Crown Champion feature. As a reminder, SGI Crown Champions are salespeople and technicians who've achieved a tremendous amount of success in the fiscal year. To be a Crown Champion in HVAC and roofing, you must have sold more than $1.5 million. And in electrical and plumbing, you must have sold and installed more than $500,000. Today's Crown Champion is Shelby Langevin of Electrical Experts in East Hampton, Massachusetts. Shelby has a proud honor. She is SGI's first female electrical crown champion. She did it by selling over $500,000 and installing it in 2021, and thus far, she's having an even better 2022. Shelby will share with you her incredible background. She knew at the age of 14 that she wanted to be an electrician, and she's worked in almost every type of electrical, electrical contracting imaginable, industrial, commercial, new construction, and finally, residential service. It's an electrical expert doing residential service. She found her perfect home. She loves the training and the support she gets from the company. She loves the autonomy of making decisions on her own in the field. Shelby will walk us through her service call process, and that's where you'll see her shine. She explains how she uses questions to diagnose customers' personality types so she, she can forecast how the call will progress. She shares how she's always able to conduct a safety inspection, even when the customer offers that initial pushback. She drops all sorts of nuggets on how she presents additional repairs and upgrades throughout her inspection, essentially closing the customer along the way. She gives examples of how she talks through objections and so much more. Shelby is so impressive. This may have been her first year as a crown champion, but I promise you this certainly will not be her last. So without further ado, here's Shelby Langevin of Electrical Experts in East Hampton, Massachusetts. I hope you enjoy it and take away a nugget or two. Shelby, so glad to see you. Thanks for being on the show today. Really glad to have you. For those who uh, haven't had the pleasure of meeting you yet, could you please share your name, your company name, and where you're located? Hi, my name is Shelby Langevin. I work for Electrical Experts. We're based out of East Hampton, Massachusetts. <laughs> excellent. Very good. Very good. So uh, we're talking for an excellent reason. You had just a killer 2021. Share with everyone what you ended up doing out of your, your residential service van. Um, I was able to sell $500,081, um, which makes me a crown champion. 
That's right. A crown champion. And I, as far as we know, I think it's the first female crown champion we've had uh, through ESI. And I think more than, I don't know, 10 or 15 years we've been, we've been tracking this. So you should be very proud. <laughs> um, so very excited to have you on. Want to, want to learn how you got into this and, and then learn the magic of what you do in the home. Uh, so first things first, how did you end up in the electrical industry? What, you know, what, what got you into this? Um, so growing up, I was never the biggest fan of like school academics so much. Um, so when it came time for high school, my parents really pushed me more towards a trade school. So for high school, I went to a vocational school um, where you got to go through and they had 12 different shops that you kind of got to go through, pick, you know, what ones you like the best. Um, I chose electrical as my top shop that I liked, um, you know, just really lucked out at 14. I never thought I'd be picking my life career. Um, yeah. And the more and more I went into shop, got through shop, I really got more and more intrigued and wanted to learn more and more and more. And here I am. That's great. <laughs> That's great. So who did you start working with get, get to get some of your hours who, you know, because you didn't have electrical connections right away, right? So you worked somewhere before yeah. then. Yeah, so I've been through a couple of different companies. The first company I worked for was an industrial company where we okay. mainly worked for like factories and wastewater treatment plants and stuff like that. They did a lot of yeah. the big stuff. Um, I worked for them for my whole co-op. So for two and a half years throughout high school, I got to work with them. Yeah. Um, after graduation, I moved on and I worked for a smaller company that did like mainly new scale commercial offices. So there's a lot mm -hmm. of like doctor's offices, stuff like that, hospitals. Sure. Um, moved on from there and then i went to a different company which um specialized in more so new residential like new houses brand new builds yeah worked for there for a while and then i uh, moved on again and then i came to electrical experts and this is the first company where i've done home service work and yeah. it is by far my favorite that i've done out of everything <laughs> that's great that's great now how did you find out about the the opportunity they had um, I honestly just happened to see that they were hiring and I was like, all right, let's try this one. And I applied right? and I didn't know what I would be getting into. I honestly, this was like, all right, it's another electrical company close to home. Let's give it a shot. Yeah. Um, and then once my boss hired me, he kind of explained more so how we would be doing things, you know, with like the straightforward pricing and everything. And I just, just blown away. I was so excited. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world to be able to like make all my own decisions <laughs> and everything. And <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Was, I was sold right from the beginning. That's great. Now, how long have you been there? I've been here for just under four years. Just under four years. So you've been there. That's pretty good. For, you know, that's pretty yeah. good. So you know, be four did, years for me. <laughs> okay. What was your, uh, what was your onboarding like? Did you just start doing ride alongs right away to kind of understand uh, how they did business or what did you guys do? Um, so actually when they hired me, um, we had just lost our journeyman who was doing the expert side of things with us. Um, and when I say expert side of things, that's because we have a big commercial side too that doesn't really do any of us. Yeah. Um, so we had just lost our journeyman that was doing the home service work. So when they hired me, they didn't really have anybody to train me and show me what was going on right away. So they yeah. actually had me go do a ride along with another company in our state that were, you know, the boss is good friends with us. So oh, I went that's to the great. other side of the state for a day, did a ride along with them, seeing how they did it. Yeah. And then, um, you know, they had me come back to the office for about a week or so, and they had me watch all sorts of onboarding videos from SGI <laughs> and all their training videos and everything. Yeah. And then um, a couple months into me doing it, we actually went down to Pennsylvania and we went to one of SGI's trainings, like in-person ones. So I got to That's learn true. a lot from that. <laughs> yeah, that you know, the in-person stuff, I know every, everyone likes to do stuff online these days, and this is an online interview, but something about just being in, in the space and, and everything's kind of, the distractions are gone. I, I think there's something to still in-person anything, so. That's yeah, great. absolutely. I loved it. We've done a couple of them now. And, you know, even now that I've done a couple, they're kind of just refreshers. But every time you go, you're sure. still learning something new. And I it's, I like it. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to hear that. So, yeah, people that are listening or watching, a crown champion says you can still gain something from going to the same class over and over. So Always, always. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember who you rode, who you rode along with? That uh, Was it another ESI, SGI member? Yeah. Or, yeah. Do you remember yeah, it was, was actually, it was. Tingly Electric. Oh, is that right? Oh, those guys yeah. are great. That's great. Well, good. Shout out to Tingly. Those they're they're phenomenal. Um, so that's yeah. that's that's great. That's great to hear. Um, and how much do you guys train nowadays? Now that you're a seasoned crown champion, do you still you know make time to train? Yeah, 
Um, honestly, almost every day. Um, we have a smaller scale company compared to some of the other ones out there. We only sure. have four technicians right now. Um, but every morning our company meets, the four of us we meet with Tim, the owner of our company. Mm -hmm. And we go over calls, we go over what we could do, you know, if we ran into a situation, how we could handle it better. Um, we kind of bounce ideas off of each other, how we can help each other. Yeah. Um, so every day we kind of do in-house training with each yeah. other. And yeah. then, um, you know, we're constantly, if we run into something or have issues, we always reach out to SGI or we'll try to like look for like past videos that you guys have posted and stuff. So that's great. <laughs> Hey, it's all, you, you know what? I always thought once you got through school, you were done learning, but really, uh, you got to constantly. No. <laughs> you know, that's great. I'm glad that, to hear that you guys do that. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the nuts and bolts of, of a service call. So um, when you get dispatched, what do you kind of do to prepare yourself, maybe mentally, and also, you know, do you do any kind of research on the type of uh, home, you know, who, who you're going to, what they've done before? Maybe kind of walk us through that. Yeah, so um, like I said, we have our morning meetings every morning, so we kind of all do it together, and that way we can kind of see if anybody else has any ideas that we I might be missing myself. Mm -hmm. um, but every morning we like to go through, we look at the calls, um, we have the ability to listen to the recordings from when the customer is called in, so we can That's listen good. to see exactly what cool. the customer says. Mm -hmm. um, and then we go on, we'll, we'll either try to look up the house, whether it be like Real, um, Zillow or Realtor.com or anything on the internet, we try to look up the house, see if we can find when it was built, if it was sold recently, if there's any pictures of the house, um, try to get as much information as we can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, we all, we like to do that before almost every call, even if it's not in the morning meeting, you know, if it's our second, third call a day, we're still doing the same thing. Cause thankfully we have iPads that we use. So we have the ability to go on the internet and look it all up and everything all right away. That's great. So at least you have in a mindset of what you're walking into. All right. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Now, so now while you're driving, do you do anything to get you kind of clear your mind? Say you had a bad call. Someone was just a pain, you know, those happen even to crown champions. So what do you do to, um, to you know, center yourself again? You know, if I have a bad call, I really, really try to not worry about it too much. Yeah. You know, if it's, mm -hmm. I try to talk about it and see if there's a situation where if it was anything I could have done personally differently, mm -hmm. or if there's anything I can do better next time per se, or, mm -hmm. you know, if I have a really, really bad call, I'll call and talk to my boss and I'll be like, <laughs> well, what do I do? <laughs> sure, sure. Um, you know, thankfully those don't happen often at all, but, yeah. um, it's kind of nice to be able to like talk out loud to somebody else, talk it through with my apprentice, what we could have did differently, how things could have done differently. Yeah. Um, just try to talk about it and try to not, you know, worry about it too, too much because, mm -hmm. you know, sure. you can't, you can't hold on to the bad fund. <laughs> yeah, no, that, I mean, it happens. That's good. It, you've got a good mindset on about that. So, mm -hmm. all right. So, so you pull up to the customer's home, you walk up, you know, you knock on the door, you say hello and they let you in. What do you do? What do you like to do to start kind of building rapport? Do you are you the type that tries to offer a compliment or do you kind of make small talk to find common ground? What's your approach? Uh, a little bit of both. Um, I always like to pull up and at least ask if where the van's parked, if that's okay, because I feel like they like that a lot of times because you're right off the bat asking if they're okay, if they're comfortable with something. Sure. Um, so that's usually like my first step. Um, and then I always I always try to compliment something within the first couple minutes of being there like if their yeah. yard or they have decorations or anything like that I like to throw out a compliment because that also you know it helps me judge how they're going to receive it if they're talkative if they want to talk more you know trying to figure out more so their their personality how we have like the right. different disc personalities yeah um and you know if they're super talkative then I'll stand there for a minute or two and I'll talk about whatever they want to talk about just let them get it out and <laughs> yeah yeah so that's interesting. You mentioned DISC. I heard that. How much do you, yeah. when they're talking, are you really trying to diagnose them? What, where they yeah. are in the DISC personality? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I do it immediately. Yeah, that's one of the first things I try to figure out because I personally, I'll try to kind of match them. I'll try to give them the same energy that they're giving yeah. me. Yeah. Um, and I feel like it, it works in my favor most of the time. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I was just going to ask if you mimic their body language and behavior. Yeah, <laughs> I try great. my best to anyway. <laughs> sure, of course, of course. Um, you know, do you at that point, do you try to kind of share a, like a credibility statement or, you know, your background or you kind of just kind of play it off more and, and then, you, you know, you warm up and then kind of go to why they the reason why they called you? 
Um, it, it really depends on the customer. Like I said, if they're really high energy and they want to talk, I'll kind of, you know, just go on and on about the company, how they want, you know, like how we do things and, you yeah. know, if they want to know the information right off the bat. Um, if they're not so talkative, I kind of just let them take the realm and then try to take it back after. <laughs> sure, sure. Do you, uh, what, what kind of questions do you ask maybe at this point about what's going on with the problem? And you ask what other, what other maybe questions you ask about their electrical system? Um, immediately, I usually ask, how can I help you today? Um, okay. And that's usually my opening because I don't want to freak them out if it's, you know, if there's an emergency call where there's something immediately bad, I don't want to ask like what they need and have them get nervous. Um, so I always say, how can I help you today? And then let them kind of take the realm for a little bit and, you know, mm -hmm. tell me what's going on, what they want, what they need, what type of call it is. And while they're doing that, that gives me a little bit of time to kind of assess what kind of customer they are and what, sure. you know, how they're feeling, if they're anxious, if they're excited, if, you know, like kind of how they, they want, what they want. <laughs> right. For sure. For sure. All right. So you get a little background, you know, what's going on. You, you've got a good vibe on, on the type of person you're dealing with or in a rush, if they're, they're wanting to talk. Uh, what's the next step? They just take you the, the reason why they called where the repair is going to happen. Yeah, I um, I find that it works better for me to let them take the you know take it right off the bat. Show me what's going on, what they want, um, and it also gives me kind of a minute to kind of assess the house while they're talking to me. I'm kind of peeking around. I'm looking around. I'm looking at devices, smoke detectors, kind of just trying to feel out the house myself, just yeah. so I know kind of what we're excuse me what we're getting into. Sure. Um, without them like realizing that I'm doing it right off the bat. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. um, so then once they kind of go through, they tell me what's going on. Um, I kind of take it back and I ask them if they've used our company before and, you know, okay. either yes or no. Um, if they say no, then I'll go into explaining our, you know, our straightforward pricing, how our company works, why we do what we do, kind of give them like the value statement and everything. Yeah. And then at that point, that's when I usually try to bring them down to the panel and kind of okay. take over from there and start with the safety and saving or the safety check and stuff like that. Okay. All right. So you, you go to the reason why they call, whether it's, you know, one or place an outlet, and then you, you kind of give, go through that, that background information and then you go to the panel. How do you, how do you, um, what do you say to go, Hey, I know you called the, to just to replace this basic outlet that might have burnt out or something. What, how do you say, well, I really need to take a look at your electrical panel. How do you explain that to someone that doesn't um, get so, Yeah, so like I said, I ask if they use our company before. If they say no, then I, you know, give them the spiel. And then I say, you know, one of the big things that we really like to do from my understanding is we like to do a 10-point safety inspection where we check out your service and a couple basic things in your house. Yeah. So I can understand what type of system I'm dealing with. And um, so we can make sure that you don't have any other larger um, issues that you might be unaware of. Mm -hmm. And usually once they hear that, they're open to us going and looking and showing us everything. Sure. If, if you do get a little pushback, is there anything you say to them to kind of put their mind at ease that you're not here to, you know, try and rip them off? You know how that certain mindset is. Yeah. So what do you, what do you yeah, say in those um, instances? If they give me pushback, then I kind of just drop it for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I don't push back right away. I'll drop it. I'll kind of go into, you know, say if it's a diagnostic or they want that one outlet replaced, then I'll go and I'll do that outlet. But, you know, once I tell them, hey, I have, in order to do this outlet, I have to shut off power. Would you mind showing me where the panel is? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a different way to get sure. me back to the panel. And then once I'm down there, I can be like, hey, you know, I was in here already and I happen to notice you know, kind of just go into anything I find. Sure, sure. When you, now when you go do the safety check, you go to the panel, do you always want the customer to go with you or you try to at least get them to go with you? I try, I try to yeah. get them to go with me. Um, I feel like it just works best because you can sit there and you can show them everything you're finding as you find it. And like, right. you know, if it's a panel in rough shape, they see your reaction. They see that you're like, oh no, this isn't good. And it's real. Yeah. It's not me putting on a show for them being like, hey. Yeah. So they can yeah. see that. They see me looking at the dates. They see me doing everything and it's it's right. much more real to them. Right. Um, if for some reason they don't want to go to the panel, I always try my best to take pictures because like I said, we okay. have our tablets, good. so we have the capability to take pictures. So That's I'll bring great. the pictures back to them and I'll be like, look at this, you know, this, this, this is a concern to me and yeah. kind of go from there. 
Yeah. How, when you when you're talking to someone about an electrical panel, again, you know, homeowners don't know a darn thing about it, right? So, yeah. so how do you how do you talk to them about how it works and what's good and what's really bad? Like if it's an outdated panel that you know you just don't see things are just not in a good shape. So how do you, how do you kind of communicate that to the homeowner so they see that there's that is a real concern? Yeah. Um, it you know every situation's different. If it's just a panel that's old, you know I'll tell them you know manufacturers warranties are, or panels are only really made to last about 30 years. Yeah. Um, yours is over that. I you know I kind of go into how old I can tell theirs is, and then I tell them why I'm concerned that it's over 30 years old and yeah. tell them it's outdated, not just that it's old. Um, yeah. You know a lot of it's in your wording how that's you tell point. the customers. Sure. Sure. <laughs> um, and then, you know, if it's overloaded or anything like that, I go into the safety concerns of how the metal is not rated for that many circuits and anything mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you get you start getting them to open their mind up like, oh, this isn't just an outlet. Maybe I do need to consider some other some other things as well. Um, yeah. from, from the panel, where do you typically, do you have a kind of a set path you like to go or things you look at or how, do, how does your safety check kind of go from there? So the panel is always my favorite spot to check because, sure. you know, it's where you're, I feel you're going to find the most issues. Um, obviously, once you go to the panel, you can open it up and you can tell immediately if there's any sort of water damage, corrosion, um, arcing, anything burnt that shouldn't be. Right. Um, and then that'll, that'll kind of lead you into if it needs an exterior service too, like if the meter is bad or the service riser is anything like that. Right. Um, you know, if they don't have arc ball protection or surge protection, um, that's always a big thing that we like to point out to them and talk about. Sure. Um, if I go in and the panel's immaculate, you know, I'll go in and I'll kind of go towards like smoke detectors, GFI protection. Um, but a lot of that, like the smaller things like that is stuff I like to kind of look at and prepare myself ahead of time. Like before I tell them I'm doing the safety inspection, I'm already checking to see if we're by a sink, if there's a GFI, if your smoke detectors look old, sure. um, stuff like that. Sure, of course. Um, that's interesting. When So when you, let's let's stick with the panel just for a little bit longer. See, you go, yeah, this is really, it's outdated. Um, how do you, how do you kind of, is it just like you kind of leave it at that? Or do you ask them, would you like me to write up an option on a, a new panel? Or do you just kind of include it in an option later on? I, yeah, I personally include it um, unless they specifically say like, no, like I'm not yeah. interested in that right now. Just focus on this. Sure. But sure. if I go back and I tell them all this stuff and they're kind of concerned about it, I'll go back and I'll build my options. I'll include it automatically. Um, yeah. And it, that gives you a great potential for writing different options and right. seeing how they feel about them. I like that. So, yeah, you don't you don't give them the chance to close you out right away. So that's that's smart. Uh, yeah. When you mentioned surge, you mentioned surge. It's something again, not a lot of people think of. You know, they just got the strips mm -hmm. right. That does everything. <laughs> uh, yeah. So how do you how do you how do you present whole house surge protection in a way that that customers think about it? How do you, how do you talk about it? Um, so I tell them that it you know it protects them from any you know potential weird, especially up here in New England, we get the craziest storms, craziest weather. Um, sure. I tell them that it protects them from all the weird weather we have, um, you know, potential power company mess ups, anything like that. And I tell them that it protects all the appliances that they don't think of. And, you know, depending what room I'm in, if I'm in the kitchen, I'll say, look at your dishwasher, your garbage disposal, your refrigerator. These yeah. are all things that have small appliances in them that you don't think of. Right. And you're not, you know, you don't have surge protectors on every outlet in your house. So there's sure. plenty of things that aren't protected. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll I'll try to make it personable by whatever room we're in, pointing out whatever I see, really. <laughs> for sure, for sure. You also mentioned GFCIs. How do you kind of present those and educate? You know, if it's someone that just isn't technical at all and and they have no idea really what those little buttons are on the outlet, like, well, how do you how do you talk about those to to people that just don't know any better? Um, kind of the same way. I just kind of give them a little lesson. I'll tell them what the GFIs are, where they're required, why they're required. You know, any areas that are good and grounding that have the potential that could protect you. I always make sure to point that out, that they're there to protect you from getting potentially shocked or anything. And um, I always really try to highlight that it's for, to protect them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's a good point. 
Um, the other thing I always like to ask people about is smoke detectors, because I think yeah. I know how I grew up. No, no, oh, you put them up there once they last forever. Right. Well, that's not really the case. Yeah. <laughs> um, how do you tell people that yellow smoke detector really isn't uh, doing well, potentially is not doing what it needs to do? Um, I usually just tell them, I'll be like, try testing them. I was like, you know, I almost can guarantee yep. you that if you press your test button right now, they're not even going to work. Yeah. Um, and then I explained to them how like the new smoke detectors are photoelectric. I explained how they work, why they're better than what they have. They're much more sensitive. They're going to protect you from much more hazards. Um, and also we've been really big on using the 10 year sealed um, detectors. So they usually like it once a year, they don't have to go change the batteries all the time. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. I hear that. That's there's nothing worse than three in the morning hearing a beep and you can't figure yeah. out where it's coming from, right? It's chirping out of nowhere. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. We all had that nightmare. Support for this podcast comes from Dynamic. IAQ, it's all we do. Since 1982, Dynamic Air Quality Solutions has been the leader in designing, manufacturing, and distributing IAQ products to the commercial and residential markets through authorized HVAC contractors. Our IAQ product designs are based on science and logic, meaning they are scientifically proven to work in a lab setting and logically work in the HVAC applications that they're designed for. Supported by world-class IAQ trainers, SGI members also enjoy the exclusive benefit of having these extraordinary IAQ products private labeled under the Clean Air Defense System brand. Partner with us and enjoy the benefits of the science of clean air. Visit worldclassiaq.com for more information. Welcome back to the show. I'm talking with Shelby Langevin of Electrical Experts in East Hampton, Massachusetts. Uh, we've covered a lot so far, and we have so much more to go. In the second half of our interview, Shelby will share how she approaches writing her options, she, uh, how she sells diagnostics, how she talks about clubs, financing, how she handles objections, and so much more. So let's jump back into my conversation with Shelby Langevin of Electrical Experts in East Hampton, Massachusetts. So, you know, you look at the repair, you do the... Uh you do the inspection. Um, talk about, you know, are you uh, at that point, are you writing up your, your options right there or do you start on the initial repair? What do you like to do? Um, I personally, I go to my van to write my options. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like being able to take a couple minutes to kind of sit down, rewind, think about everything we talked about, think about everything that I potentially seen. Mm -hmm. um, there's no pressure because the customers aren't right there staring at staring you watching at you. everything because sure. I know me personally, if I'm trying to build an estimate in front of a customer, I'm going to forget something. Like without a doubt, <laughs> I've done it a million times. I've learned my lessons. Sure. sure. Um, so I'll go out to my van. I'll take a couple minutes. I'll write options, um, mm -hmm. you know, best, better, good. I always try to have at least three options. I was going to ask about that. Um, yeah. And it, yeah, they usually always include the best one will be everything potential plus something they could never, you know, they never even dreamed of, never imagined. Sure. Um, and then, uh, the, you know, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. No, that's all right. Um, that's all right. <laughs> so, yeah, options. I'll always try to sit down and do my options. Um, take that couple minutes. It also gives me time to kind of reflect on what we talked about, think right. about everything, see how I want to handle certain things. If they gave me pushback on anything, you know, what's worth talking to them about or, you know, kind of pressing the issue. Sure, um, sure. It all, you know, just gives me a minute to relax, honestly, and yeah. clear my brain yeah. before I go in for the sale. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. That's great. Now, uh, you said you, you present good, better, best, right? That's how you present yeah. the three? Okay. And when you're building out options, I always feel like there's an art to it, right? So you said the first yeah. one, you, you know, it's it's to the tilt. How do you decide what to take off maybe the second and third option? Is the third option just, you know, what you called me for? And, and then, you know, how, how do you approach the second and third option? Um, yeah, so like I said, best. So for example, I go in and I give them a best option of a, you know, service upgrade with full fire guard upgrade. And then, you know, like a whole home redevice option just because, hey, we're throwing an arc fault. If it's going to find an issue, it's going to be in your devices. Let's try yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so then, you know, the better option, I'd get rid of the redevice. Cause that's not really something I'm actually expecting them to go for. You know, obviously right. they do fantastic but it's not something that I have my hopes super high on. Yeah. Um, so that's usually my better. My better would be, you know, the service upgrade and then what they called me for. Yeah. Um, and then depending on the customer, you know, cause sometimes we have customers that don't want a service upgrade, but they're still really interested in like fire guard and surge. 
So sure. I'll do like my my um, my C option, my last option. I would do you know still the arc fault protection and the surge protection, and then what they called me for. And then if they're not interested in that, I yeah I prefer them to ask me for like a fourth option, or they just say like you know it. that's still really not what we want. Then I'll break it down and give them the smaller option that they want, and it'll be typically just what they ask me for, or say they want, you know, just surge and what they asked me for. Yeah. That's when I kind of let them take the realms and tell me exactly what they want in the rest of the month. I like it. I like it. You make them ask. That's that's great. Um, yeah. Do you guys do do you guys do a club membership? We do. You do. Now, when do you when do you start initial? Do you do you hint at the club membership or talk about it early in the call, or when did, when um, do you present it? Normally, when we're going over options, um, over options. It, it, it depends. Sometimes I like yeah. to throw it out there when I'm going over my spiel in the beginning where, like, if they're really interested in how our company is, um, yeah. you know, I'll throw it out then and I'll kind of overload them with everything they can think of and then yeah. I'll circle back to it. Sure. Um, with some customers, if it didn't get brought up, I always like to at least mention it when we're presenting our options because um, right. when we're presenting our options, there's two different um, Two different prices. So it'll show our price, and then it will show the potential savings because that's we right. use service site, and so that's just how it's set up on our end. Sure. So they can see the potential savings right there, and then that usually leads into a question of what's this? What else do I get out of it? And then I go more into detail about the benefits of being a club member with mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. All right. So you uh, let's say you, you build out your options. You're ready to to, to uh, yeah. I was, was going to say sit down, but what do you what do you do? Do you do you ask to sit down? We just stand and eat in the kitchen, or what what typically happens? I ask what they would like to do. <laughs> yeah. I just straight up That's ask cool. them, and I leave it up to them. Um, if they want to sit down, I'll more than happily sit down on the couch, the dining room table, anywhere that they want. Um, yeah. Some customers prefer to just stand in the hallway and not, you know. <laughs> Yeah. I ask them if they have a minute, if they have a second to go over everything I found and write up some options, and I just ask right. what they want. <laughs> right, right. Do you um just to to take a quick step back? Do you guys do you guys sell diagnostics as well? Yeah. How do you how do you handle that situation where you know you're not really through the whole inspection with selling diagnostics, right? So how do you handle that dance of trying to sell that and then go ahead and show them again? So how how do you do that? Um, so if we know we're there for a diagnostic call, like if something not working, I try to sell the diagnostic right off the bat. Okay. Um, I go in and I explain to them what a diagnostic is, why I need to do it, um, you know, how there's so many different parts and pieces that could be wrong and why I have to take the time to figure out what it is and what it includes. Yeah. Um, and then I try to sell the diagnostic first thing, and then I'll kind of go into more so the safety and stuff like that afterwards okay. once I'm already doing the diagnostic. Okay, Usually Excellent. those are a little more urgent too. <laughs> sure, for sure, for sure. Okay, very good. I, I, I forgot to, to ask that earlier, but that's a big one. Yeah. It always gets, comes up. All right, so uh, let's say uh, the homeowner wants to go sit down in the living room or whatever and or stand at the kitchen table. Um, do you go over the inspection first and kind of what you found, or do you like to talk about the reason why they called first? How, what's the first thing you talk about at that point? Um, I usually tell them more so what I found because, okay. you know, they, they know what they called me there for. They're already expecting that. So I like to kind of sit them down, explain everything that I found, why I found what I found, why I'm concerned with it. Sure. Um, I like to go through all that before I show them any of my prices, anything. Sure. That way they're not distracted by the numbers. They're focusing on the actual information that I'm giving right. them. Right. Now, is your, your form, your inspection, everything, it, so it's all on a tablet at this point with service yeah. or Okay, Eric, you don't do any paper yeah. whatsoever. Okay. All right. So you um, so you kind of talk about what you've seen. Do you and, and you really just focus on the problem areas? Do you talk about things that like absolutely really should get done, or versus this is something you could be could be doing in the future, or or, or do you just really focus on the stuff that's got to get done? A um, little bit of both, because like yeah. I said, I like to give them that one big option that has yeah. everything I'm going to talk about. That way, I have the fallback plan. Where if they're like, well, how much is it? I can just be like, well, here we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> sure. sure. <laughs> So, all right. So you show, you know, you, you do, you show them the tablet. And it's got, it's got the amounts. It's got the club, the club discount. Uh, remind me, would you have the the finance to, uh, price too on there? Okay, yeah. excellent. How much, how much do you, uh, do you guys end up financing work? How much do you think? Um, quite a bit to be honest. Especially big, big calls. We have quite a few customers that like it. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What kind of financing do you guys typically offer? What's the one that really resonates with homeowners? Um, we have, so we use Green Sky, um, and they okay. have a 12 month no interest option. Yeah. So you don't have to pay the additional interest if you pay it off within 12 months. And that seems to really be the most popular one that we have. Okay, very good. All right, so you, you show them the you know the finance prices and and the, the club prices. Now, what will you say anything about the club membership at that point, or were you asked to have them bring it up? Um, I usually I tell them about it because mm -hmm. it's right there. You can't hide it. Sure. It's bright red, so they're gonna see it regardless. So I'll show them the prices and I'll say you know, and we have a club membership. You know, okay. go all into details and you know, with ours you save fifteen percent on all the work. So. You'll see here that these are your potential savings and sure sure all right so you you, you show them you, you drop the hammer with the dollar amount right and then what do you just quiet and let them let them say something first yep yeah. <laughs> i right, don't so say a thing until thing. they i go through i show them the options i show them the prices and then i just stand there and i stare at them and yeah. don't say a thing until they start asking questions or start giving some sort of reaction sure sure so if someone goes, boy, that's a lot of money. I don't know. Like, what do you, how do you handle, uh, how do you kind of take control of that situation before you can tell they spin themselves out? Like, is there anything, you, you know, that you can try to do to, to kind of calm them down a little bit or are you just wait for the open-ended um, question from them? I kind of just, kind, you know, I kind of try to just go back over the highlights of it, like the good points of why it's a good idea. Right. Um, you know, I tell them about our uh Oh. I lost the audio real quick, Shelby. Oh, you lost me. Oh, now, now, yeah, I got uh, you're, there. You're back now for a second. Can back. You, can you, yeah, you're back. You're at, um, let, me, let me restart that over. So, yep. yeah. How, so, if someone, um, you know, if someone really pushes back on on price, and boy, they they, they just kind of start sweating it out, and you can see that. What what do you say to them to try and and get their mind focused on really improving their home? Um, so I always mention the financing. We always go over financing, tell them all the time that we have financing and try to calm that nerve there. Um, I'll also try to go over the important parts again, why they're a good idea, if their safety concerns, what's wrong sure. with them. I'll go over the warranties, the guarantees, kind of just keep highlighting all the positives of why they should really consider getting it done. Right. Um, and I also try to not pressure them. If they really seem hesitant and they don't want to make that decision right there, I'm not going to force you to. I yeah. always tell them our quotes are good for a year. They have plenty of time to think about it. Um, yeah. I don't want you to feel pressured. I want you to feel comfortable with the decision that you're making. And, you know, sure. I'll be here. If you have any questions, concerns, you can always call the office. Like, I don't want to, you know, twist your arm and say, you need to buy this right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, you got to stay in the house and do the work. So. <laughs> You know, you yeah. get the evil eye the <laughs> yeah. whole time. Um, what, what do you say about your warranties and guarantees? How, how are they different maybe from versus a lot of the competitors in your market? Um, well, in our areas, we have the longest warranty. Everything that we do has a five-year warranty on it. And then a lot of the equipment that we use has manufacturer's warranties that even go past the five years. So the mm -hmm. customers can always call us and we'll, you know, we'll contact the manufacturers. We'll contact the supply house if we, you know, where we got it from, whatever. And we'll take care of it for them. Mm -hmm. um and i think them just knowing that we have real people in our office and you can call and talk to us and we're going to get right on it for you um that really helps you know kind of ease them um our guarantees we stand by them if a customer has any questions any issues we gladly go back to their houses we do anything we can to make sure they're completely satisfied with us and i know mm -hmm. i know honestly firsthand that a lot of the companies in our area don't do that which sure. i don't agree with but yeah. i think it really makes us stand out because a lot of times even if i'm going out and giving quotes to a customer that already has had other estimates and i mentioned that we have our five-year warranty stuff like that mm -hmm. and they're like they'll start questioning the other companies they'll be like well wait they didn't tell us any of that they didn't mention yeah. that and yeah. I, I always tell them ask them call them ask them <laughs> right <laughs> Yeah, put it back in their court. I like that. That was actually going to yeah. be my follow-up question. How do you handle those people that are, are just that you know that it's ingrained? I got to get three bids, and they they show you two others. Do you you mention the, the warranty and the guarantees that you guys stand by? How else will you will you look at and go if they go? Why do you have all this other stuff and they only had this? How do you how do you approach that and, and deflect that and, and maybe work to your advantage? Um, I'll just sit down and go with them. Um, I'll, you know, there's been times where I've just straight up asked them, can I see your other estimates? 
right. and I'll go through piece by piece and I'll say, you know, we're doing this, they're not doing this. Mm -hmm. They didn't include this, we're going to do this. Um, you know, if we use only the best of the best material, um, like our service changes, for example, they're all copper wire. Everybody else in our area uses aluminum. So I yep. just, I try to highlight all the key points on why our company would be the better decision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I like you know, that. we're more, we are more expensive in most places in the area, but that's because we're the best. <laughs> you know, yeah. if you have an issue, we're going to, we're going to be, we're going to come back. We're going to come figure it out. You know, you're not going to have to wait two, three weeks to even get a phone call back from us. If you call us and you need us, we'll be there that day. if not the next day. You know, sure. we, we have the best customer service in my opinion. That, yeah. Yeah, that's great. All right, so let's say that, you know, you answered all the questions well. They go, you know what, you're right. This is this is an investment in my home. I'm going to go ahead and do it. So they sign off on it, um, and you go ahead and, and get to work, and you do your thing. And let's say it takes two, three hours. Um, the homeowner's doing his or her thing. What do you do at that point when you kind of finish up the job? Do you like, like to walk them through it, or, or what do you do to kind of start the wrap-up process? Yeah, I always go in, I just say, hey, you know, ma'am, mister, whatever their name, and I just say, you know, I just want to let you know, we're all set. I I like taking them back through, showing them everything we did, telling, you know, having them look at everything, if it's a light, play with the switch, play with the dimmer, make sure they understand what we did, they know how to yeah. use it. Um, I always ask, make sure that they don't have any questions, comments, concerns, anything. I try to make sure that they're 100% satisfied with what I've done because we have our satisfaction guarantee. Yeah. Um, so. Very good. Very good. Do you do you at that point? Um, you know, do you ask them for a review, or when does that when does that happen? Yeah. So typically, I'll do the walkthrough, and then um, you know, we try to collect payment as much as possible. We can do cash, yeah. check, card. We always try to collect payment on the spot. Just makes things easier for the office. Sure. Um, and then at the end of the call, um, we have a system that automatically sends them um, asking mm -hmm. for a review. Okay. Um, so yeah. I kind of just give them a heads up. I say, hey, you know, just so you know, when I leave here today, they're going to be reaching out asking how today went. I'd really appreciate a good review. And then I always, I ask for Google reviews because right. that's how our company gets known a lot of times. I'll straight sure. up just say, hey, you know, we really, really appreciate five-star Google reviews. Yeah. I just ask for it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what you got to do, right? That's your last step in the yeah. sale. That's wonderful. Well, that's great. All right. And then you, you're on your way. Um, just kind of in wrapping up, Shelby, what, uh, what's your why? Like what drives you to, to be successful every day, to take so much care and every customer and, and try to do the best you can for, for you know, every, every service call? What drives you? I love helping people. Um, I love when I go to like, you know, a little old lady's house who can't change her light bulb or anything like that. They just get so excited and so happy that I'm there and I'm helping them and I'm doing, you know, I'm able to do these things for them and I'm at their house. I'm fixing issues. I'm giving them things that they want, that they've dreamed of. Yeah. And I'm in here and I'm making all these things possible for them. And it's, it's just beyond satisfying to me. Um, I even, I went to like a customer's house a couple weeks ago and it was a diagnostic call who she had a half her house had, or not half her house, but a good portion of the house had no power. So she was yeah. frantic. She was freaking out. She had children, wanted to make sure that everything was situated. So sure. I went, took me a couple hours, found the issue, fixed it. And I went and told her that I fixed it. And she's like, do you ever just feel like a, superhero like, <laughs> and I was like yeah kind of sometimes like That's cool. <laughs> it's yeah it's just so satisfying and I like I like seeing how excited people get when you turn on that new light that they've been waiting for you bring power back you restore their issue and they just they're so happy and grateful and it's heartwarming <laughs> that's really cool that's really cool what what's it like working at electrical Ex experts by the way and having the team there I know it's a good company so maybe yeah. Talk about how it's nice to have that support system behind you and, and how that provides confidence. It is absolutely amazing. Electrical Experts yeah. is by far my favorite company I've worked for. As I said, this is the fourth company I've worked for, and this is the best company I've ever worked for. I have the best boss I could ask for. Um, yeah. I've never had, you know, I've never been comfortable enough at a company where I can come and talk to my boss and say, I don't understand this, or what do you think about this? You know, I can come to him. I can ask him any questions about whether it be the work, the customers, my coworkers, anything yeah. I want. 
and he'll sit down, he'll take the time, he'll teach us as much as he can, he'll take the time to help us with anything. If I can't find material, he'll help find it. Um, and all my coworkers, it's really the same situation. Um, we're all very close. We're all, I'd call us friends. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, we all talk all the time. We're very friendly. Even outside of work, we chat all the time. Um, it's just a very, very close family feeling. Uh-huh. And I love it. I wouldn't be able to do this type of work if it wasn't for that. Because if I have a bad day, I have a bad customer. I can come back here and no matter who's here, it doesn't matter what technician it is, whether it's my boss or, you know, even our office ladies are lovely. They're going to cheer me up and they're going to make me feel better and remind me why I'm doing what I do. Because, you know, it happens. Everybody falls out of place. Oh, sure. You're human beings. Yeah. yeah, So it's it's amazing. I love it. (laughs) That's great. That's great. All right. My very last question. You're going to get a lot of people that are going to be looking up to you as a crown champion. What advice would you have for other electricians that, either they're new to service or maybe they're only doing three or 400,000, you know, and they want to get past that 500,000 mark. Maybe, maybe what did you do to finally get over that, that hump? Is there little tidbits Um, or tricks of the trade you can share? It's really, uh, it's really hard to say. All I can say is stay humble, stay eager, you know, always be willing to learn. Um, Yeah. Like I said, we've gone to a couple of different trainings and every time we've gone to a training, you get to go out, you get to talk to other technicians, you get to talk about situations, things that you're going on. And you always learn like little random things that you wouldn't ever think of. And every yeah. time we've gone to training, we've came back and our numbers have skyrocketed. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I would just say stay eager, always be willing to learn, keep an open mind. Don't, you know, don't shut other technicians out. Don't shut other companies out because you're going to continue learning from them. Even if you think you know everything out there, you, you don't. <laughs> that's, that's funny. That's great. So what, where did you, say you just went to training? Was that service essentials again, or did you go to electricians advanced or what, what, what was it? Ooh, I, oh. I know I put you on the spot. I should have asked you before. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think they were the advanced ones. Because uh-huh. I actually I did the same class twice. We went down to Pennsylvania and did one, and then we actually just did one in January in Rhode Island. Okay. Um, yeah. But I'm yeah. pretty sure they were the the sales advanced class. <laughs> that's cool. They are. Well, good. Well, it's just a little plug for anyone that's looking for training. If the Crown Champion says it's worthwhile, it's worthwhile. So. Yes. <laughs> Well, good. Well, how excited are you uh, to go to Orlando and walk across that stage and, and get your award? Uh, I'm extremely excited, extremely nervous. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, it, it's very surreal, and especially being the first female ever, I had no idea. Yeah. I, you know, I, And then once the rumors started flying that I may or may not be, then the nerves started kicking in because I was like, oh, boy. I was like, now the spotlight's really going to be on me. <laughs> oh. Well, you should be proud. We're really excited that, yeah. that you'll be down there walking across the stage and, and recognizing yeah. what a, what a great year. How, how's this year going so far? So far, pretty good? Yeah, I can't complain. Um, it's going pretty good. I'm actually a little bit ahead of where I was at this point last oh, year. So that's, that's great. exciting. Um, yeah. You know, we it's been a little bit slow beginning of the year. Winter is always yeah. a little slow, but I'm excited for what we've got coming. We've got a lot of bigger jobs quoted and sold and we have a lot of good things coming to us so that's neat yeah I'm first quarter super excited <laughs> yeah that's great first quarter is always a, a little slow i feel with electrical and yeah. then it gets super hot and everyone's like holy cow kind of missed the slow part a little bit so yep <laughs> yeah well great well shelly thank you so much for all your time today i really enjoyed this this was a lot of fun and uh, i look forward thank to seeing you in orlando <laughs> You're very welcome. Yes, Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you down there. Have a good day. Uh, you too. Take care. Bye-bye. That's Shelby Langevin of Electrical Experts in East Hampton, Massachusetts. Thanks for joining us. If you feel like you have a great story worth sharing that would also help other contractors, email me at bhouchin at yoursgi.com. Also, if you enjoyed today's show, if you're on YouTube, give us a like and subscribe. If you're on your favorite podcast player, please leave us a five-star review. And please join us for future episodes. It's my promise to you that we will continue to interview successful contractors and other influential individuals in the residential contracting world. This has been The Successful Contractor, powered by Success Group International. Support for this podcast comes from Ream. Brothers Richard and Donald Ream founded Ream Manufacturing Company in Emeryville, California in 1925. The company has produced a number of cutting-edge products in its 89 years of operation. Today, Ream is North America's only manufacturer of HVAC, 
water heating, pool and spa heating, and commercial refrigeration solutions. For more information, go to ream.com. The Successful Contractor Podcast is part of the Success Group International family. SGI is the largest member-owned best practices organization for independent residential services contractors. SGI provides its members a competitive edge through proven proprietary management tools and expertise, marketing programs, training, and group buying power, along with a highly active and eager to help membership. For more information about Success Group International, visit www.yoursgi.com.